I get excited by the idea of all of the things that, like all of the opportunities and decisions and all of the things people really want to go for in their lives, but they're not going for. Like they're holding themselves back because of fear or insecurity or, or some belief, like all of these things that we want to do, that we just don't do because of something on the inside, some thought or some emotion or some belief, something that we can change if we just know how, but the average person doesn't know how. And so with NLP and, and this kind of methodology, people start to learn how to reorient their thinking, how to reorient their feelings, and they go on and they make different decisions in their life. Now, I don't know what those decisions are gonna be, but that's kind of the mystery and that's what's exciting about this field. Because people, like, like, I like to think people go on and make the kinds of impact that they were born to make. And everyone can do that if they just know how to work with themselves. Yeah, um, I mean, one that comes to mind, like, immediately, because it's, um, there's a training coming, on, co coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, one of our students, and there's... A, quite a few like this one of our students her name is Nat she was terrified of public speaking and when she came to the group um, she would ask questions down the back and she would just go bright red and she'd fumble her words and she'd you know these funny things would happen with her voice and um, even just asking questions in the group was like a real weird thing for her and so one of the big things that she was working on in the training was like getting comfortable with other people's perceptions, other people's perceived opinions of her. And most of those in her mind were totally overblown. So in the, in the field of public speaking, like this just made her a nervous puddle. Um, and through the NLP training, like one of the things, just one of the pragmatic things she focused on changing was her relationship to that. And then she ended up doing like as a guest speaker, um, a one day training with me, this is about a year and a half ago, and she did really well and people loved her and she was really engaging and she wasn't going bright red and purple and all those other things she used to do. Um, and then in a couple of weeks time in October, she'll, she's actually joining me again as a guest speaker for an eight day program, our, our NLP eight day practitioner program. And so like there's a really like simple, but tangible, pragmatic example of someone changing something about themselves in a way that has them show up in a completely different way. Um, and there's a couple of people like that. Um, I, like f I like framing and reframing, which in layman's terms is like being able to change the story inside your mind about different aspects of life. Like, like we all tell ourselves these stories, like you know, for Nat, public speaking is scary and everyone's going to look at me and judge me. Um, for other people, they see an opportunity and they think, oh, I'm not going to go for that, that's rude, or that's, you know, who am I to do this, or who am I to do that? And so reframing is a really clever way, and when you're really good at doing it, like, you can just do it conversationally to help people reorient their thinking and just, like, change the narrative on the inside. Um, it's quite powerful. It's one of my favorite kind of techniques and I've seen a lot of success with it. Um, I, I do, and this is from Teddy Roosevelt, and I can't quote the whole thing because it's quite a long quote, um, but it's, it's called The Man in the Arena, or, or, or The Person in the Arena, and um, it, it's along the lines of, um, like if you're in the, in the arena, covered in dust and sweat and blood and and struggling and striving and coming up and, and erroring and tr trialing and, and triumphing. And like at best, best case scenario, you know the heights of triumph and success, but at worst, like your place will never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory or defeat, right? And so the whole heart of this quote is like, if you're out there doing it, if you're out there like in the arena, the, whatever the outcome, the credit belongs to you. And I think um, that's a quote that really helps people inoculate themselves against the fear of failure and perfectionism. Actually, right now, I'm not reading anything. 
and that's a deliberate choice. Um, I spent a long time reading all kinds of different things. Uh, uh, big influences on my life in terms of reading Ken Wilber, um, Hamid Almas, um, Roy Bascar, as a few people. But right now, actually, I'm focusing on not filling myself up with more information and instead spending a lot, time, uh, a lot more time meditating and being in my awareness so that I can like more fully see the structures and the biases and all of those little sneaky blind spots that, um, that definitely get in the way but sometimes aren't so obvious. I want to make this a referral based community one where like this company is 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 growing on the strength of the community behind it because people want to be a part of what's happening here not because i mean of, of course i'm super into like m making the trainings as leading edge as possible and as effective as possible but what's really moving for me is the community that the, the community of people that are like a part of what we do here that are changing their lives are changing each other's lives and um, like what's exciting about a referral based community here is like our success depends on the success of the students and I think that's exactly how it's supposed to be. And so the more they grow and the like stronger and more capable and, and more emotionally intelligent they become, well, like bigger, the bigger our family grows alongside them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say my co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> my co-workers, my partners, um, particularly Jay, Jay Headley and Joseph Scott, they've had big influences um, on me um, in this community, in my development and my trajectory in this, in, in this space. And um, they are two people who, who, like more than anything else, live, breathe, walk and talk. All of the stuff that we teach here, all of the stuff that I've learned over the years, it's one of the things that made me, like, attracted me to this company in the first place. Because when I was a student, like, I could see how for real these guys were. And, um, yeah, and, the, and I'm just inspired by, by their capacity, by their capability, by, um, by how, like, real life the results are um, inside them and inside what, what we do here. Uh, everywhere I can like and and in every context that I can so in my personal life I use NLP to more fully connect with people um, more fully understand my partner and my friends my family um, communicate in a way that um, like communicate in a way that is like more receptive for them and and easier for them to process and integrate um, in my professional life I use it to connect more fully with clients um, I use it to work with the things that I get uncomfortable about, the things that I get insecure about, if, if ever I do experience those things. Um, like I, I literally use it, even with the things that I write, the articles, the proposals, like it translates to every facet of my life. Um, and I haven't found an area yet where it's not relevant. Um, the Enneagram is like a useful map to help um, help understand some of the like trials and tribulations as well as strengths that certain people have be based on what they pay attention to, based on what they value. Um, it's not a replacement or a substitute for getting to know the person. Like I would never use the Enneagram to presume to myself that I know someone because I know their type. But it is useful in terms of um, giving me some clues, giving me some insight into um, like some of their habits, some of the some of the things that they may likely be going through. If I can check in and explore with them, there's two traps that I think that are really common in this space. The first trap is um, the first trap is usually like a beginner's trap. And a lot of people, like, for example, if they first come in the room and they first start learning different things and it's all very exciting, very interesting, one of the first traps that is, I think, pretty common is some people, um, 
we'll learn all these things and say, oh yeah, I definitely see how that's true for that person, that's true for that person, and oh, like my neighbor definitely struggles with this, but not me. Um, so one of the begin like the beginner's trap sometimes is is some people like assume they're a lot more um, developed or mature or or like they're they're like they're like kind of above it, and often oftentimes that's not true. That's not the case. Um, that would be one trap. And then another big trap is when people start really learning the content. Um, sometimes they're you know some people can get like overly excited and then try and apply all of the techniques or tools or whatever to every single person they meet without permission. And that's a quick way to lose your friends. And I don't recommend it at all. And in, in the coaching room, uh, there's a big like philosophy of applying to self and only using, like, only using these things with other people, one, with permission, uh, and two, like nine times out of 10, only if they've asked for it. If there was only one lesson that I could impart, then the lesson would be with every struggle, with every problem, with every distaste or disdain you might experience for someone else or for something else, like look within first, because what you're probably experiencing isn't the other person, isn't the situation, it's like some aspect of you you haven't fully dealt with or haven't fully resolved yet. I mean, I got into it for the same reason why I'm still into it now. Like, I got into it because of one of the things I said earlier, like, I was really aware of all of the situations I was holding myself back from, all of the people I wasn't connecting with, all of the opportunities I wasn't going for, all of the, like, self-talk inside my head that was just causing me misery or second-guessing myself. Like, I was just really aware of all of the unnecessary suffering I was going through um, and that other people go through and um, like how unnecessary it is and so I definitely wanted to do something about it and what was really important to me about doing something about it is the idea that like if someone had helped me um, if someone had given me those tools early on like it would have just saved me years of nonsense and and pain and then I was really attracted to the idea of just helping helping um, someone else like not have to go through th through that same through that same stuff like and of course we're all going to go through challenges we're all going to experience pain like that's definitely a part of life but um you know some of it is like unnecessary it's just bonus pain and bonus misery and and it's self-inflicted and doesn't need to be that way